The notice for the uh, hearing reads as follows. City Council a hybrid public hearing on FY 2025 proposed city budgets, including all city departments, water and sewer, harbor master, and capital improvement plan. To be held June 25th, 2024, 7 p.m. at Council Chamber City Hall. Um, please use the following Zoom link. The proposed operating budget and capital improvement plan are available for inspection at the clerk's office during regular business hours. Um, please call for an appointment. Additionally, the proposed budget and capital improvement plan may be viewed online at um, cityreport.com slash budget. That is the notice for all present. Thank you. Uh, would any person wishing to speak either in favor or in opposition to budget, um, we will do public comment. So if anyone has signed up, uh, and we'll also do online if I see a hand in the next minute or so. James Snow. It's not a snow Okay, Jane Snow, Street. First and foremost, I wanted to thank all the staff and department heads and things who came to the budget hearings and shared with the residents that came and the counselors all about your different uh, departments, what you were doing, what you needed help with. Um, I learned a lot and I appreciate that you took time away from your families in the evening to come and share that information. And I just wanted to make sure I said thank you because we are so fortunate in your report that we have great employees who are working diligently behind the scenes and we just have seamless days and they're the ones that have to take care of the pipe leaks and you know, traffic accidents and all the good stuff. So I just wanna make sure that you know that people, residents do appreciate all that you do. And counselors, we had a long night last night. Hopefully, we're not going to be quite too long. We're not going to have any 10 30 folks here now. Um, but again, we worked very hard on the budget, and I appreciate it. And I know at times not everybody agrees with everybody. And you have the hard job of putting away all the personal things that you would like and trying to decide what you think is the best course for the city. And I know it's a hard job, and I hope you can kind of put your personal hat at the door and really look at the figures and things because I am incredibly concerned that the budget as it is in each year with the um, raises for uh, employees for salaries and things, it's just not sustainable. And we've somehow got to come up with a way to make it so that it's affordable for a lot of people in the city and not just some. So thank you and have a good night. Thank you. Elaine, uh, who is Step right up to the line in the name, address, and check in the book. Good evening, everybody. Um, I am here, and thank you very much for. Oh, it's Elaine Paglia, 39. 39 Street. Street. Right, thank yeah. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come in and express some concerns I have regarding the rising tax um, rates, particularly as they are applied to our seniors. I happen to have a lot of interaction with seniors in the city. I am chair of the Council on Aging, 
And I'm very happy to say that I've been a volunteer at the Senior Center since its, since its opening with that grant. So every day I get feedback from our seniors, most of whom would never come to a meeting because they don't go out at night, don't use the computer as they would zoom in. And many of them are not, well, they're ill cut. So I hope tonight to have their voice and speak for them and relay some of the comments that I've received from the many seniors <laughs> that I've talked to. Seniors cannot continue to absorb high tax increases. Those individuals who have lived in Newby for their entire life and own a home are very concerned that they will not be able to live their life out in the city they love. They are on a fixed income and have very hard, have a very hard time in meeting the cost of living as it is, let alone excessive tax increases. I can speak for myself in terms of my retirement in 2014. I went back and analyzed the amount of taxes that have increased since the time of 2014, my retirement. My taxes have increased in 10 years, 64%. My income from Social Security increased a whopping average of 2.2%. <clears throat> As you can see, 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 some of the seniors in general are really hurting to make ends meet. We really need to pay attention to the budget items and really try to make it affordable for seniors to continue their life living in the city that they're involved. Thank you, Elaine. That, that's it's, okay. Thank you. Uh, Stephanie Nickerson. And uh, again, two minutes. Thank you. Can I speak to you? Sure. Can you get it all in it? No, I can't. I cannot do I cannot do it. I'm not directly for that. Stephanie Nickerson, 93 High Street. Um, it's a, this is the one meeting every year where we get to see so many city staff in our building. Greetings, thank you for all you do. Um, thank you to uh, City Council, particularly to the budget chair, uh, the budget and finance chair, Sharif Saeed, and members of that committee, and to all of you for the amount of work that goes in to reviewing this budget. It is a tremendous amount of work, a lot of meetings. And as much as citizens can be informed that it's going on, they can't, uh, they can't control it. You're, you're represented. And one of the uh, difficult things is um, that you're not getting feedback, I understand, uh, during this process of reviewing this budget. I think what happens is the feedback comes in December when the new tax bill arrives, and then it's too late. So I hope when you look at the budget, and everything you're looking at tonight, you will keep in mind last December and the reaction that people had. And the year before that, the reaction people had to these incredible increases in their property tax bill. And it is hurting people, it's hurting seniors, it's hurting young families. Um, not everyone in the report uh, can absorb this rate of, of increase in rates taxes um and it's a it's a it's a very sad thing for the city for it to become unsustainable for people who have lived here all their lives or for decades and have made the city actually what it is now so please keep that in mind as you vote on the budget thank you thank you uh brianna higgins Hi, Brianna Higgins, uh, school committee members of Indian Storybook Drive. Uh, I just wanted to stand in front of you and say that um, I support the school budget that has been presented to all of you that was voted on by the school committee 
Um, I've edited it carefully. I've gone through it. It's a very long process. It starts over the winter, where the superintendent presents an aspirational budget, he presents a level service budget, he presents another uh, a final budget, and then we heard from the the mayor that some cuts were needed, and so we we did address those those cuts before it went to um, in his final version. And so again. The budget that was presented, although there is an increase, like we also remember that 70% of our budget is made up of salaries that are actually obligated to um, increase by two to three percent each year. Um, inflation obviously goes up, our transportation costs go up. And so all of these things happen, you know, the budget increases by between two and four percent, even without any additional services being added for our students. Um, no FTEs were added to the school budget this year. In fact, they actually declined. Um, so if anybody has particular questions about the budget throughout this process tonight or um, in the future, I'm happy to answer any questions. I know intelligent people can certainly disagree about how the budget is um, spent, but I just wanted to let you all know that I've carefully reviewed the budget and I feel confident with um, the way it was presented. Thank you. Julia Walker. Good evening, Juliet Walker, 13 Eagle Street uh, School Committee member. Uh, also here to support the school budget being presented tonight. Um, I can reiterate that this has been a lengthy process. We do vet it as a school committee. We individually have our concerns. We face those throughout the process, um, and we start that process in November uh, or before. So um, I would say that coming to you, it has been through a lengthy debate and discussion with uh, school committee members, with the administration. Um, but I would say that we all agree on one thing, which is that we want to serve our students the best we can, understanding what we can do with the, the feasibility of our community. So we are mandated to serve every student that lives in this community, whether they come in uh, at the beginning of the school year or they come in the middle of the school year or at the very end. And we have to build our budget so that we can plan not only to provide them with excellent education, but for some of those contingencies for unanticipated needs. So you'll see that the budget reflects not just the, the bare minimum. We are edging forward um, to rebuild programs that have been cut in the past. It has taken us almost two decades to build back programs that were cut a while ago in the foreign language, music, theater, and arts, which are critical parts of a comprehensive education. But we're not doing that whole thing. We're not just adding those positions back all at once. We're edging back towards that uh, excellence. Um, I think we have a 0.2 increase for music teacher this year to make a, a full-time music education program uh, addition. But that doesn't reflect an overall increase in FTEs. We've made adjustments within the budget to, um, to maximize FTEs in other departments and other divisions. So overall, it's a conservative budget. We went through many iterations, um, but we're still trying to provide that excellence of education and serve every student that comes through that door, no matter what their needs are, um, subject to uh, the mandates of the of our state and not the laws that we have to, to serve. So um, I wholeheartedly uh, endorse the budget and hope that we will support it. Too. Thank you. Thank you. The next would be uh, Judy Avery. Judy Avery, 54 Mill Street. I'm very concerned about property tax increases with the passage of this budget because I did not attend budget workshop meetings. Doesn't mean that I don't care. A budget is a plan for every dollar that you have, not what you wish you had, not what you hope to have. I think of needs versus wants. Let's not live beyond our means. Things happen. School groups don't get the funding approved. Mid-year comes back with a new plan, etc. I chose this city more than 40 years ago. I chose some of you, but right now, with this excessive spending, I do not believe that you are choosing to have me be able to live here. Thank you, Judy. Here, I have stuck my little alarm here. We will have uh, Jeanette Keller. I have a single. 
What's that? So sweet, I'm sure that just like she Okay, you get four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to for the writing on this text. I've never done it from the phone. So, um, I, dear Sharif, I have another meeting tonight, so I may not be able to attend the budget meeting at City Hall. I know you have been in contact with Elaine Padlian, and I want to say that I am in agreement with her concern for yet another significant increase in both property taxes and assessments. I am not going to list the reasons for my concerns. I will only say that this is increase is a burden on elders that impacts their daily lives, their health, and their ability to live their golden years in ways that deeply com compromise their well-being, activity level, and ultimately their health. Please make my concerns known to your fellow council members if, not, if I am not there to excise them myself. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Jeanette. Oh, that was a good job. Okay. Um, <laughs> seeing no further public comment here on site, I do not see any hands raised uh, online. So we're going to uh, identify a motion for us to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, made by Council Z, seconded by Council Harmon. Um, we'll do a roll call on that. Yeah, Closing uh, the public hearing. Council Khan? Yes. Council Lane? Yes. Council McCauley? Yes. Council Preston? Yes. Council Chan? Yes. Council Wright? Yes. Council D? Yes. Council Dunning? Yes. Council Grant? Yes. Council Hahn? Yes. And Council Cameron? The hearing is closed. Yes. And now we will start the special, well, city council meeting, this portion. Yeah. And I think we can just do that uh, with also starting with the vote call. We'll call to start the um, Special City Council meeting June 25th. Council Khan? Present. Council Lane? Yes. Council McCall? Yes. Council Here. Yes. Council Sheen? Present. Council Wright? Yes. Council D? Here. Yes. Council Dunning? Yes. Yes. Council Glantis? Here. Council Hahn? Yes. Council Cameron? Yes. All present. Yes. Great. So thank you, everybody. So we're going to start tonight uh, with um, order 569, which is the FY 2025 budget order. Uh, so that um, I'll take with the committee to hold, and obviously we're here all together in session. I'm going to do the reading from the booklet um, between uh, uh, Councilor Z, as chair of budget finance, who has so ably led us uh, so far through the, these uh, the many woods and twisty turns. Um, we'll, we'll be um, certainly assisting and providing comment and, and running the numbers, um, as will Ethan Manning, the city finance director. Um, and we'll we'll go down. I'll, I'll read each department. If you can go to your budget, uh, we'll both which is in your binder. I'll just start with a motion to approve order five sixty nine. Second. 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 Okay. okay. And we'll start discussion before we go through the lines. Okay. Is there anything you need to put that? Yes, please. Thank you. So um, I do have some general comments I want to make on the budget, but really it's an opening um, statement uh, as, as the chair of budget. I, I really. I want to echo some of the sentiments you heard from public uh, comment. Um, tremendous amount of thanks um, to really first to my colleagues. Um, just so residents are aware, the 11 people in this room probably gave up on average, you know, three nights a week for the past six to eight weeks to review and vet both the capital improvement plan and the budget. Thank you to my colleagues on budget finance, especially, um, having put in quite a bit of time. So thank you to all of them. Whatever we all come to in terms of how we feel about this budget and the debate that may ensue. I also want to thank um, the administration in particular. So Mayor Reardon has been helpful in his administration, uh, Chief of Staff Andrew Levine, and of course, uh, without a doubt, uh, Ethan Manning, who's basically been working with us to facilitate all of the requests that councilors made throughout the process, providing us a supplemental and behind those individuals, all the department heads you see here who were basically the, the source of that information. So I don't want to reiterate the lengthy email I sent a couple weeks ago about this process tonight, but just a brief reminder for residents who may be watching. Um, this is the final uh, hurrah on the, on the budget for FY25. Uh, we will be going through the lines. Councilors are uh, empowered by our, our city council charter, or yeah. our city charter, to make cuts to individual line items, um, anywhere from the full amount down to any amount they so choose. And that would then need to be seconded and then uh, by a assent of a majority, a fair majority, six 
a cut may pass, and at the end of the night, we'll take a full vote on the full budget, and that would also be a, a bare majority, six to uh, whatever, to in order to be able to pass it. Um, sometimes residents do ask, so no, councillors are not enabled or allowed to add to council uh, to, to uh, budget lines. So cuts are cuts, they become unallocated funds, um, subject to future appropriation potentially or uh, reduction in the tax collection to understand the tax rate in November. So again, there's a lot more to that story, but I think just to set the stage for tonight, and I'm still hoping, uh, Mr. President, that if, if councilors want to make general comments on the budget before we start going, then to the OT that. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you, Councilor C. Any other councilor want to make a general comment before we begin going through the lines? So, if no one else wants to go, I will go. Um, I this is going to be the bulk, I think, of what I say tonight on the budget. So, I, I appreciate a little bit of leeway to make my comments um, after six to seven weeks of reviewing, as I had just mentioned. I really want to start off with a couple of key statistics. You know, this is the budget, budget's about finance, finance is about numbers. So, there are some really critical numbers that I've been thinking about and focusing on as I've been sort of thinking about the budget and what it means for the city and specifically what it means for taxpayers. So here are a couple of stats to consider. Two budgets ago, we had $939,000 in excess tax levy, which means that we were able to tax almost a million dollars more than we did. And that was just two budget cycles ago. Today, in this budget, this proposed budget, that number is zero. There will be no more excess tax levy. So in other words, we've swung the pendulum back from having excess capacity in our levy, which defined, is defined as the maximum we're enabled to tax, down to zero. So that's one big swing, and then in addition to the typical two and a half. And I want to say for residents, obviously, they know this intuitively from their tax bill, but a prop two and a half and the two and a half percent does not mean that tax bills go up by two and a half. I wish the math worked that way, but there are other extraneous factors like new growth and so forth that lead to bigger amounts. The second key stat that I want to state is an interesting comment that was made during public comment about um, you know the percentage of salaries, the percentage of the budget, pardon me, that goes to salaries. And there's no doubt that's a highly accurate statistic. What's interesting is that in the last five years, the city itself, meaning the non-school part of the city budget, we've added eight full-time employees. Um, and to me, a bit staggering that the school department has added almost 36 full-time employees in about the same period of time. You can use your own conservative figure for what an all-in employee may cost, but I think you'll find that that's a pretty big number. And so that's something that I think has really become a substantive budget driver itself and something that's going to require considerable thought and due diligence uh, going forward. From 2021 to present, we've more than tripled the amount that we spend on principal and interest, our debt. This is non excluded debt, so these are not the debt exclusions that the president and so forth. In 2021, we we're spending $820,000 a year on principal and interest. In this budget, it's proposed at $1.25 million, and the capital improvement plan calls for even more debt and more spending. You heard in public comment one person state that their bill went up six to four percent in ten years. I calculated the average for the average single tax on bill, which we typically use. Fifty percent is what the answer is for ten years. I'm um, award one counselor in my ward, unfortunately, has tracked much higher than that due to fluctuations in assessments and the particular rise in the South End and even the island, uh, particularly in the form of land values. And we continue this sort of death spiral, in my opinion, of funding critical infrastructure and projects with free cash, of which we have no guarantee it will be created and no idea how we're going to spend it until, in some cases, the very last minute. This budget's not happening in a vacuum. We're also facing some substantive water and sewer increases tonight. That's the subject of a separate order. So here are my, so those are some statistics for you to consider. It's not good news. I, I wish the trend were different, but that's what we're looking at. And the budget is the opportunity to potentially consider how you can change that um, over a period of time. And nothing happened overnight, and nothing will happen overnight in the future. Um, to me, this is the affordable housing debate. We spend a lot of time on this floor talking about affordable housing. And this is it. This is the original affordable housing debate long before there were discussions about things like the Brown School and other things. I see and I see with my own eyes, but I think I hear from residents too challenges around the middle class. Um, I really appreciate the use of the word sustainable. We use that a lot for various things, for trash, for environment, but financial sustainability is a, is a thing. And being able to be sustainable means being able to foresee what the future is gonna hold and be able to continue to maintain what we're doing. There is no artificial way to solve this. I think a lot of people hearing the public comment tonight immediately will jump to the idea that 
somehow some kind of senior tax program is the solution here. Perhaps it can be part of it, but it can't be the solution. The solution is to look at spending. It has to be a balanced approach in order to how you solve this problem. And solving just means getting things in the check. It does not mean stopping the city from progressing. It doesn't mean we don't do any projects. It doesn't mean any of those things. There's also no big flaw in Proposition 2.5. Um, as budget chair, I'm thankful we have two and a half because even with two and a half, we can barely hold tax increases for the average resident to, to about five to seven percent on average. Without two and a half in place, I can only imagine we'd be looking at more like 10 to 15, which would truly be crushing. Now I'll get to the difficult part of the night. Um, based on last night's conversations, but also going through the budget workshop number nine, I see zero appetite on the city council in the, in the case of bringing together six votes to meaningfully change the budget. During workshop nine, we talked about a couple of lines. It was lamented by at least some that the lines that were being questioned were very small. This is my ninth budget. I've done the paper and toner arguments on the floor. I will not be doing them tonight. It is not a fruitful use of time for the council, nor does it make any meaningful difference um, in the end. And so without that appetite, it's a bummer, but the reality is that appetite didn't go away tonight. It hasn't been there for the last 10 years. Many of these new positions that I mentioned I fought them along the way, saying we really need this position, can we hold off on it? And unfortunately, once you have it, then you're in the position where, yes, you absolutely need to meet your obligations. And if you have a collective bargaining agreement, then you are obligated to meet that. And that is fair, and that is fair. Um, in addition, we continue to just keep running, running along with projects, funding processes, even though we have no consensus on where the end result is going to be, what the cost is going to be, and so forth. So every two weeks, we go up and we do a similar thing. And we are sort of surprised by the outcome. So this is the power we have. I think something you'll hear from counselors tonight is, don't worry, you'll get it next year. Um, next year seems to never come. And I've been doing this for a while. So I'll close by addressing residents. I do feel that out there, there's some residents that feel they just aren't being heard, like nobody cares about the property taxes. I hear you. I'm trying to balance things out. I'm here on this floor every two weeks doing that, suggesting compromises and trying to find ways. But at the end of the day, um, this process, this budget, this is where it all comes together. And uh, I don't want to make too big of a bold prediction, but presumptively it will pass tonight as it is. And um, in the fall, uh, the bills will come and they will have to be paid and we will have another fight about free cash, um, trying to mitigate as much as we can. So those are my comments and thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak about it. Yeah, thank you, Council President. Um, so yeah, I, I love that we're doing opening statements before the budget. Um, I too, first of all, I hear residents. I'm not so doom and gloom. I have been sitting here uh, through the budget process for now my seventh year. What we have been learning over time, and, and yes, we have done even like cut toilet paper once. I remember that over at the market landing restrooms when we used to have them. I remember sitting here going line by line. We then learned about union contracts and saying, well, no, we can't touch the union contract ones because those are obliged to go up 2%, 3%. So then we targeted the department heads. Anyone who was not union, we targeted them. We then tried to look at the percent that they were getting more. What did we end up learning? What we ended up learning is that you lose the talent. Kind of the backbone of a municipality is its talent. So yes, the employees are a significant part of this budget. So yeah, you're not going to see me go after them, not at all. But what you will hear about, and what I hope you're going to do is, we are just a city council that sits here and asks the questions, questions that our residents must be wondering about too. Things that make their quality of life day by day successful. To call DPS, to be able to have their trash picked up, to reach out and, and get the service they want from our city clerk, to get a passport expedited, which is like a friend of ours is doing immediately, these are services and they're not for free. I'm sorry to say that they're not for free. So what is our role here? Is to develop a budget where we could challenge maybe some way of thinking. We're gonna to need to start thinking differently. I'm sorry, there are people from day one of canvassing in 2017, I heard about people not being able to stay in their homes. I heard about the stress that it causes to see property values increasing well, for some, that sounds great, right? I mean, we're in that type of society. This community is not the only one facing this. And going to the Massachusetts Municipal Association, the MMA, where 351 communities send their town select people, send their city councilors, 
to come and tackle these very issues. So what are the solutions? Yes, you're, you're right. We are as counselors, maybe not in that role to tell administration how to maybe consider other strategies for setting, setting a water and sewer rates. Some communities have a separate rate for seniors. Do we look at that? No, but there are solutions. And I encourage and I tell all my residents out there, those who are really afraid, oh, no, there are solutions, there are home rule petitions, there are tax breaks. If you talk to Joe Brennan, she will sit with you and figure out whether people want to do another abatement. And yet things could be changed in abatement. I've heard several situations. So no, I'm not scared here. But what I am looking forward to is having the debate, the conversation about starting to look at things maybe differently than how we did years before. But I am very grateful for the administration because for me, in my term, in the seventh year of looking at this budget, it has been lean with the consideration that we recognize that this is going to be something with a pipeline of projects, infrastructure, New, new things that we know for a city to grow successfully, we're going to have to do. But to be honest, you guys, the grants, I'm telling you, grants, look at the source of funding to I encourage you in, this, in these projects. So, yes, yeah, so my message to everyone is we've done a lot of work here and we have every resident's back as we explore ways of the new ways to provide tax relief as well as other relief with sewer, water rates, anything that goes to the to the homeowner. So I leave on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other counselors? General comments? Yeah, I'll be very brief. Um, you know, I have severe concerns about the increase in the budget. Um, yes, there are ways to do abatements, there are senior work on programs, but they're not saving the seniors that we have today. We're looking at a 4.3% increase here. And frankly, all of it is in schools, which makes it so very difficult. And I'm not blaming the school committee or the superintendent, right? Their job is to, you know, get the best resources that, we can, that they can for our schools. However, we're looking at our total 2.5% increase in our levy is $1.65 million this year, right? Of that, schools is taking 1.73. You heard that correctly. Schools is taking all of it plus more. We're running everything else in the city on the seats. That's not sustainable. You know, even if this wasn't pushing our seniors out of our homes, it's not sustainable. We can only take a two and a half percent levy increase every year. If every penny of it is going to schools and we're still going to have to pay the actual obligations to the unions outside of schools, we are not going to be able to do that. There is no solution other than laying people off in the following years if we don't stop this train from going down the tracks. We are putting ourselves into a corner that is 100% unsustainable, and we have to think creatively about ways to make sure that we get in front of that so that it's sustainable for the community. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Seeing no further hands, Council more colleagues. Uh, thank you. I'm just a little slow on this. Uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, as I look to this budget, it's over $102 million. Concerned about our spending trends, uh, removing the enterprise accounts. The operating budget is $86.7 million. Represents a 4.4% increase this year. It's top of 4.9% increase last year. It's top of a 4.9% increase the year before. Three years, 13.8% increase in spending. Uh, the myth busted here is tax increases are a direct result of spending increases. Uh, the assessments and the tax rate is how we progressively, equitably spread that along. A $3 million house pays more than a $500,000 house if you can find it. Uh, according to the Notional Chamber, and report has a 13% more expensive cost of living that surrounding communities, again, going to affordable equity uh, arguments. Uh, I do want to thank the public for their comments. Uh, their spending, uh, spending affects their lives, and we should be cognizant of that. Our seniors are now in a class called Alice, asset limited, uh, uh, income constrained, and sometimes employed. Uh, and so they, they're getting squeezed by all sides of uh, I want to thank the Budget and Finance Committee and the Chair in particular for facilitating great conversation with the department heads. I want to thank the department heads themselves as they work to advocate for more things needed in their departments. 
It's a time consuming process, and we all know it, but it is the best way to learn how your money, how your money gets spent. I want to thank the mayor and the administration for their commitment to transparency in this process. School spending is 60% of the total tax. It's capital, insurance, employment, <laughs> charter school, your tax, gets its tax, et cetera, all for about 20% of the population. By contrast, the departments that we speak with are PWS, that is fire, police, EPS, parks, sustainability, health, um, equals about 25% of the budget itself. And that includes operations, benefits, uh, long-term debt. The must spends to call out that I want to remind folks of is Viva, the free bus costs us $178,000 a year. The charter school costs us $1.75 million. Retirement costs $5.6 million a year. Benefits alone cost $10.9 million a year. Excluded debt costs $3.2 million. Regular debt is $1.8 million. So roughly $23.5 million is must spend the commitments that we've made. Uh, as I mentioned in workshop nine, I would like to see the budget increase close to 2.5% this year. That would mean a reduction in spending to roughly 1.5 uh, to get there to make those cuts. I don't think we have a stomach for it. Uh, that's what I took away. Uh, I offered it up the other night to the takers to settle for this budget and fix it next year, but we won't because unless we fix it today, next year is an election year, and we're not going to fix it next year. So last night we spent $3 million in 65 minutes of the day. This money was a combination of free cash, cash on balance sheet from other accounts. It was tax money and spend. I know people don't like this word, but I call it over tax. It was sitting there waiting for the right money to the right moment to be spent. And last night, that was there. Uh, my final thought is if we don't have an appetite to take the hard steps to get to the $1.5 million reduction, then I hope we can just uh, save everyone time and effort to get to the final vote. So, thank you very much. I'm going to ask uh, Councilor Janders to jump up on the podium here. I'd like to meet him. Um, President, I can. Um, yeah, just uh, this is my 13th budget, lucky number 13. Uh, just, just I hear everything that the people are saying, and this is really the room where you, you get all of these different perspectives. Uh, you know, uh, there's some song that uh, uh, everybody is, uh, no one's, no one's right, and no one's wrong. Uh, I think it's some, something from the 60s, um, but I, I will say. Uh, I think this is a, a very lean budget. I appreciate the administration's due diligence. We had a lot of questions last year about certain salaries. There were a few last year that went up a little bit uh, more than certainly inflation, and that was to achieve, achieve some level of market uh, equity and, again, retaining people um, because people are the backbone of city government. Absolutely. A lot of the faces here uh, tonight are very exemplary of that. Um, but just a comment, my, my, my read on this is the city side of the budget is uh, a proposed 4.7% increase in on school side, school side, which includes obviously our own, by far the biggest, um, in Whittier and Essex effect. Uh, that's a 4.6% increase. So everything's going up a little bit. I, I don't, I'm not, I don't know that everything is going to the schools. I think it's across the board. I budget. I, I, you know, I know the school committee struggled with it. wasn't happy about um, the percentage that they ended up with. There were a few people, um, but I think this is the best way to go. As we go through these line items, um, there were definitely some opportunities for savings, and those would be helpful. At the end. And maybe some large cuts happen through this process. Yes, that would be good on the tax rate side when we get to that in the fall and winter. Um, but there are some opportunities, and so I think we, as we go through this. Um, you know, I'm certainly going to listen and consider voting in favor of those cuts uh, on a case by case basis. But um, I just want to appreciate all my colleagues again, House Receive uh, for this and uh, the administration for helping us get through this and all the department heads to put this together and make it happen on a daily basis. So that's it for you. Uh, pretty much be quiet. Yeah. Okay. So we'll start. Um, we'll do the lines. If you want to go to their um, budget workshop, work for the binder. I know many of you are electric at the moment. 
Um, and although I've been in 13 budgets, I've never actually run this part of it. So if anyone uh, doesn't like the way I'm going too fast or too, I'm going to go general and just kind of I read the budget categories. Going too fast or too slow, Ethan can't keep up. Um, there are got some changes. And then we'll pause at the end to uh, see where we're at money wise and, uh, and uh, take the next step. All right, so I'm going to start. Uh, Page one of 25, and that would be with City Council. Uh, so, again, if any councilor wants to make a motion to amend uh, with a decrease, uh, please shut that out because I'm looking down at my list. Um, and then, well, if we have a second, then we'll be able to take that. All right, so starting with uh, um, President, maybe for the public's perspective, too, when you go through the department, we have what the total percent increase was, and that's on this shift too, here that I know. Do you have that? I do. Okay, that would be fine. Uh, so we'll start with City Council um, versus Personnel Services, which is a 0.2% uh, increase. Um, so City Council, I'm sorry, City Council, did I say Personnel Services? Um, so city council personnel services is point a zero point two percent increase. City council purchase of services uh, zero percent increase. Uh, mayor's department uh, personnel services there is a uh, fifteen point six percent increase. Mayor's department purchase of services there is a forty one percent decrease. Mayor's office. Sorry, Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to make a suggestion uh, on spoiled alert. I don't think any cuts tonight because, frankly, I don't think any of them are cuts. So I, I think it's just an act of utility to, you know, suggest cuts that we know aren't going to pass. So maybe in the interest of time, if you could ask rather than sorry, go ahead. It's just a suggestion, but maybe if people have cuts, we can cut to where those cuts are. Um, how about we do it in the order? I'll just call the call the department, and um, I'll leave the, um, the the category behind and percent increases for folks. Um, okay. Everyone uh, on your council call one, so you'll be able to do that. All right. So mayor's department, uh, general administration, budget contingency. Auditor's Department, Assessor's Department, Treasurer's Department, Information Technology Department, one Human Resources. City Clerk's Department, <clears throat> Board of Registrars, License Commission, Observation Commission, Planning Board, Zoning Board, Planning and Development. Legal Department, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Emergency Management, Animal Control, Parking clerk, school department, Essex, North Shore Tech School, Rear Oak Tech School, EPS Highway, EPS Snow and Ice. Health Department, Sustainability, 
Council on Aging. Brent Pain and Youth Services. Veterans Department. Library Department. DPS Parks. Historical Commission. That exclusion. Ordinary Debt Service. Retirement Board. Current Group. <laughs> Moving to Enterprise Funds. Upper Master Department. The yes, sewer DPS water I'm looking for five minutes and steps. So move to all those in favor. Aye. Thank 
So our, our 500 recess is over. So we sure. Okay. Good. So um, we've entered the, the amounts and so the motion on the floor uh, originally was to approve uh, the consecutive. And now we've added the numbers uh, from the you want would you? I will read them. Those? That's okay. Yeah. So uh, in the original order, there were a number of blank lines based on the process we just undertook. I'm going to read out the numbers here. So in the first sentence, that the city of Newport report raised and appropriate in the general fund a sum of $86,764,189.14 as the operating budget for fiscal year 25, and then um, running from July 1 to June 30, 2025, of which $38,376,735 even is appropriated to the school department. So those are the first two links. Now I'm going to go down this list here under the further that areas and read to those numbers. Downtown paid parking fund. So these are amounts the following sum shall be appropriated from other available funds. Um, uh, paid parking fund, $1,027,787.62. Recreational revolving fund, $146,579.70. Waterfront parking fund, $25,000 even. Water enterprise fund, $84,000. $787.51, Sewer Enterprise Fund, $104,968.57, Harbor Master Enterprise Fund, $7,004.37. So that concludes the top part with one exception. Parkland Fund? Yes, Parkland Fund needs to be amended and added in. And that is in the top further that, that was added during the budget process. That amount is $18,000. Council will probably recall from that workshop that that funds align in DPS. That's uh, allowed the parklets. Now, the bottom numbers, the, the three, these are the total amounts for the enterprise funds. So, with that, the city of Newburyport raised and appropriate the following sums in the enterprise funds as the respecting operating budget of each fund for FY25 Water Enterprise Fund, $6,964,661.33. Sewer Enterprise Funds, $8,294,072.89. Harvard Master Enterprise Fund, $567,961.31. And uh, Finance Director will provide a copy of this so you can it shortly. We, that concludes the filling in of all of the fields. And that's great. So uh, that motion had been made and seconded earlier. Thank you for uh, adding those amounts for the roll call. The roll call approving in order of five and nine. As I uh, just written, I just read by Councilor B. Councilor Khan? Yes. Councilor Lane? No. Councilor McCauley? No. Councilor Preston? No. Councilor Shannon? Yes. Councilor Wright? No. Councilor Z? No. Councilor Dunyu? Yes. Councilor Granis? Yes. Councilor Hahn? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Meeting six, I believe. Uh, motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we will turn to uh, order 570. Motion to approve order 570 FY 25 to 29 capital improvement plan. Thank you, Sergeant. Sorry. Did you repeat myself on this bill? Okay, thank you. I'm uh, just going to check all the treatment order. Order 570. Uh, okay, so uh, who's the second on that? The record going to Thank you. Are there uh, any amendments that counselors would want to offer on CIP? I'd just like to make a comment again. I'm not going to be as lengthy as I was with the budget, but I just want to say that um, I have uh, personally, uh, in my votes over the years on CIP, gone back and forth between the, the idea that the capital improvement plan is a planning document and should be taken in that light to more recently being asked by residents, doesn't the capital improvement plan say that the project has money in it? So I am <laughs> back on my wagon on that and uh, will not be supporting CIP tonight. It's high time that we start funding this thing. 
the reason we've gotten ourselves into such a capital hole in the first place was that capital has been treated as an optional. We'll do it if and when we can for so long. And the last thing, just to give a statistic, doom and gloom at all, the CIP is a five-year plan. It calls for approximately $113 million of spending over the next five years to hold maintain service. Um, I don't, can't find a calculator where I can pencil that with or without grants and make it work. And so for those two reasons, um, and this is adopted by resolution, like budget, I just want to speak about this. Thank you. I'm also not going to be supporting this uh, as it sits. I've been saying for um, ever since 2020, everything has changed. I don't know why we're still operating on a plan that's been continuously rolling since before I was on council. Um, I think it makes sense to wheel this entire plan up and go back to square one to see where our priorities fall at this point. Um, the amount of money that's in this, I mean, it's always been treated like the monopoly money. I'm not going to sit here and cut things and then so on and so forth. I want to see the whole plan blown up and redone um, with our priorities in mind. Other comments, Councilor Khan? Um, yeah, thank you, Council President. So just to remind people, the CIP is a municipal practice across the state with municipalities. It's a five year plan so that people and publicly you're actually required to actually do a, a hearing for the CIP so that people are not blindsided by the type of projects and what the city is looking to invest in. So actually, if folks have not looked at it, and I encourage even the residents, the CIP for me, and again, if you go back over the decade, look, look, look at the last 10 years, you'll see the projects and you'll see the importance of priority. So we're always told to look at fiscal year 2025 because that's where the funding sources are defined for the council to be looking at. And it's actually reflected in every piece that we've done so far. So from an educational perspective, I understand there's some stances people want to take, but CIP is good practice, good planning practice. And I really am very grateful during the budget hearing when the departments are before us, they also talk about their CIP submittals. So we learn a lot during this whole process from their overall planning, like how are they looking at from the investment needed to do the jobs that they're slated to do. And, and the nice thing is, like everyone said, it's not mandated. We're not, this is not something that's being codified. It does become very fluid and flexible, depending on the priority. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Further comments on the CRT? Yeah, hold on. I'm just going to give an example of what I'm talking about. Um, in this, uh, the police dispatch center, which has been kicked down the road, uh, which is a public safety function, I've seen the dispatch center itself. I moved that up personally two years in a row to the next year, and it's kicked into an, uh, into down the road again. So for that reason alone, I don't have any trust in this document either as far as accuracy. Um, our priorities are not our priorities. It seems to fluctuate year to year depending on political pressure maybe or what the loudest, uh, the squeakiest wheel is. Um, so again, I'm, that's why I'm opposing this. And I'm asking not for it to be eliminated, but to be redone and prioritized, given the fact that the cost of everything has gone up since 2020. So for that, so on. Thank you. Um, so I just want to make one comment to point out that, um, you know, <laughs> we've been at both of these for quite a lot, the, the budget and CFP, you know, collectively. And <laughs> No one's made any cuts. No one's made any suggestions. No one's found any solutions. No one's come up with any other way to do it. But in the 11th hour on this floor, I know it's within our range to do so, but it seems a little, I don't know. What, 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 what do we just spend the last you know, several weeks doing? If not boring through this, we find you at home and deciding, you know, week by week until all the weeks that it should have been. Conversation last Thursday, and we didn't have that conversation. So, but we're going to have it now. And I just, that's a little disingenuous, you know. Um, you know right? that comment. You know, I mean, and this is at everyone. Yeah, not not at anyone in particular. It's um, to, to, to be there. So, this is just my general comment. Um, we just had a vote that was basically almost split on the budget, but where were those comments? <laughs> where were those comments? And that's about when we have the opportunity to cut anything in the budget. So I'm just not really sure what 
I mean, we just would just say no and then go back to the yard and then this again for another six or seven weeks. Is that what we do? Or just say no and have a budget or no projects? Like, I just, and you can understand why at the very last minute this is the conversation that we've had all this time to bring up these issues. That's it. Yeah, thank you. I, I want to a little bit react to that, but also um, give my own thoughts here. So, firstly, I, I would remind all of us that all 11 of us are available to make suggestions of cuts, not any one in particular of us, but all of us are available to the, that discussion. Um, and frankly, in the lead up to the budget of evening, I very much wanted to make cuts in this budget. But in the process of leading up to this, it was very clear to me that nothing was going to pass. That's why I made that decision to, to not make us sit here and go through that brutal process of suggesting cuts and then having every single one of those cuts end up six bucks and every single one of those cuts not happen. So, you know, that, that's where I am on this. That's why I went into tonight with the, the, the thinking of not proposing any cuts and not going through that brutal, brutal exercise. But also knowing that if there were no cuts suggested by counselors, frankly, in the six majority that might have had an appetite to do such a thing, if there were no cuts coming from that side, then I was not going to be a, a yes on the budget. Um, because as I very clearly stated at the beginning of the meeting, it, I do not think this is in any way sustainable. And I think we are setting ourselves up for a disaster in the ensuing years. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I only one of eleven opinions here, but that's where I'm thinking on this. And and frankly, um, to the CIP document, you know, I, I really appreciate it as a planning tool. I certainly want to be certain that we continue to have a CIP. However, I what is such a struggle for me with this particular CIP, and frankly, I hope the administration is listening to everything, is that we don't have any prioritization. And, you know, here we sit, we've just adopted this budget, which is way too big of an increase in my personal opinion. We talk endlessly about this rec center and we want to get the rec center done. We have, you know, $70 million of water and sewer infrastructure that needs to get done. We have a $30 million fire headquarters that needs to get done. We absolutely cannot afford to do all of these things. They're just, no matter what calculator you use, we cannot afford to do these things. And so to have a CIP that includes all these projects, but sets no prioritization to them, is also an exercise of futility because it, it, there's no point to it. Again, I appreciate the planning process of it. We need to be able to have a plan, but without some sort of set of prioritization and taking some of the things off the list that we can't afford to do and moving up the list things that we have to get done, there's there's just no point in it. And therefore I'm not going to see Thank you. Hey, uh, no, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I, I I do want to react to that. And I, I okay, it's a fair question you want to ask. I think personally as chair, if it didn't feel like this was brewing, I don't know what meetings one went to. I was at every one of them it seemed very obvious to me we had a split um feeling about the budget and about the capital improvement plan but more importantly and more immediately instead of getting up and trying to sort of say well why won't counselors just support this it's your responsibility to fix it why doesn't somebody else propose an amendment or why doesn't somebody make an argument for 154 million dollars of spending in five years whether you want to argue that it's the right amount of spending the wrong amount or how about just how you would actually fund that how about that conversation i get up every two weeks i write ordinances. I try and create compromise. It's not always the responsibility of a handful of people. It's all 11 people. So this thing is likely to pass six to five. If that's a sort of acceptable margin, then accept it. But own the fact that the yeses vote for it. The yeses voted for the tax increases in the budget. The yeses may care here on the CIP and so be it. That is the process. I am not happy with the CIP. I am not going to sit here and fix it just so I can get the theater on every cut and then end up with a, with a document that doesn't make any sense. Somebody should please, kindly, one of my colleagues, please stand up and argue for the CIP, even make any sense for me out of some of the projects that are in here that have either been deferred or have been moved up or have been kicked out or have doubled in cost like fire station one. Somebody make an argument like that instead of asking why counselors, in a sense, are not doing their job. Yeah, I just wanna, there's a couple of things I, I just wanna, um, talk a little bit about, I, I, 
I too like the concept from more to I'm, I'm finding this a very interesting dynamic. Uh, I feel like there's a a glaring um, pointing of sides. And what I find interesting, having gone, I'm a member of budget and finance, but we lost my other budget and finance person. But we, every hearing, and they're all recorded, so we can watch this, because I'm sure I'm not missing something. We had every department come through. We asked questions. I asked questions. All 11 of us asked really good questions. So um, when it came to cuts, we tried to understand, well, you know, what's the increase here? What was the reason? We didn't talk about the cuts we wanted to see. So granted, I was not at the Thursday meeting, but I did start trying to watch it and trying to see, okay, what's people's appetite? Because normally that's where you kind of started. But a couple of years ago in budget, we didn't even do that. And on the floor, we went page by page and people offered their cuts. I did as well. But I feel like the group did not want to do that. Or they were like holding their cards close, wanting someone else to do it. And I will tell you many times in the past, somebody may have an item and I would be like, hey, that sounds really good because we don't get into that debate. You know, we listen, we take information in, but if someone said, I want to cut this and this is why, I sat in the seat and I said, sure, when we do the vote, sometimes it's been seven, sometimes it's been eight, sometimes it's been four, it's never going to be lost. But I feel like there was already an agreement made here by a few to do this. So I am going to call it out. It's very unusual. This is the first time I'm seeing this. And you guys can watch our last meetings. So I think there is some message trying to be sent. Fine. Let's say that's happening. But the CIP, I think the counselors um, that are posting it have always never liked it. So, I mean, we could go through. We, when we have the departments here, here, if you look at it, priority, I, I do want to point out that every project does have something called priority. So every sheet has a priority. Some say enhancement, some say maintenance. And then the other thing is they have the year, each of the fiscal years of when that's anticipated to be spent. Not sure how much one can have a planning document, but you're right, this is not gonna be set in stone. It's not static, it is dynamic. Why? Because this is all fluid. We can't codify this because things and priorities change. We know that, but it's something. And so I'm, I'm just a little, Again, uh, I just find this all very interesting. I, I think at the end, we all want to do what's best for the city. And I hear that from all 11 of my colleagues and I respect and value you. And I'm sorry if you felt like you couldn't even offer your, your suggestions, your cuts. I'm sorry you couldn't do that. But listen, you had an open ear here. Your question, Yeah, so um, I was at the meeting Thursday and uh, I did offer up uh, some suggested uh, cuts and a pathway to get there. And in that debate that happened, and I did it up front so we wouldn't waste anyone's time. And I was told by the members that were there that there was no appetite to do any cuts. There wasn't an appetite to cut a million and a half dollars. There wasn't an appetite to go through line item by line item to get nickels and dimes out of you know supplies and toilet paper bowls and all that kind of stuff. Um, we asked it. And the answer was, we're not interested. So it's not, there's no conspiracy here. It's just, there's no interest in trying to cut a million and a half dollars of spending in there. Then I had made my offer. I had given three or four examples of how I'd like to get there. Um, I was uh, debated up against and lost. Now, so be it. So I'm, I'm not going to reiterate that uh, along the way. We did try to make cuts. Uh, but um, so I, I'm, I'm unsure why we think this is the last minute. We knew from Thursday that this was going to be the result tonight, um, given what was going on. So I'm, I, again, I, I'm just being consistent with what I see in here, and I understand that um, it is frustrating for some. Uh, but you know, I didn't. If if, if I was supposed to offer cuts, um, I tried that Thursday, and they were rejected. But I didn't hear anybody else offering cuts. And the I offered cuts last night for three million dollars that we spent, and they were all rejected. So not really an appetite to cut anything from my perspective. That's I'm just speaking for myself. So I you want to respond? Yeah, I just want to respond to that. And, and this is for everyone. Moving ahead, it's in this budget hearing. 
with all were, and I was not there Thursday, so I'm sorry I missed your cut suggestion. Um, but this is normally where it happens. Were all of the department heads there on Thursday? I don't know. You guys can tell me. No, they weren't, right? Yeah, normally this is where we do it. Just so you guys know. It's not a peace committee meeting because not everyone can be there. But here in this chamber in front with all the department heads have taken time to be here, this is what we do. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? I can ask a uh, clarifying question of the director of finance. What happens if uh, this CIP does not pass? Yeah. Well, what doesn't What doesn't well, According to the city charter, um, the city council shall adopt a capital improvement program. I believe it's before June 30th. Uh, it doesn't say what happens if, if, if the body does not adopt. Uh, I'm going to step down from the chair of council. I'm going to go swap on the council to be the one. Okay. So I think you've heard me say I've been through 13 budgets. Um, Wait, council president, you have to sit and you have to recognize me. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're great. Sorry. Thank you. I'd like to speak. Yeah, I'll do. Thank you. This is kind of nice to sit in this old chair. Um, so back in the day, we did not have a CSD. I, I don't know if it was mandated and we didn't do it, but we didn't do it. And when it came around, um, I've been around Ethan Manning's first uh, year or so, 2009 or 10. It was quite a revelation because otherwise we were just getting stuff heaped at us uh, last minute that we knew nothing about. Uh, and it was a, a real mess. And it was a lot of jockeying with departments. Uh, and, it, it, and it was literally a hot mess. So. Um, you know, I looked at what the CIP was 10 years ago. I think it was $81 million. Now I, I think it's 154 uh, over, over the following uh, 10 years. Um, and yeah, it's grown, but again, it's it's a plan. The pieces where we appropriate the money, we have our, our second bite of the apple. There are others that somehow, sometimes are, are grant funded or other elements of funding that don't pass through our, our appropriation lens, but um, it's it's really just a planning document. So yeah, I don't know. It says you know that's why I ask. Uh, if, if it doesn't pass, I don't know you know where we go um, other than that hanging out. I don't know. I'm sure somebody hasn't passed one in Massachusetts in the last few years. But um, again, I'm not happy with everything in it. I don't think we're going to end up paying for everything that's in it over the next number of years. Uh, I didn't have time to go back and look at some of the older ones, but a lot of these things do fall by the wayside. Several things fell from the wayside from last year that we discussed. And, but again, I think it's just the planning and prioritization document. There's lots of prioritization and sequencing of funding and possible funding sources. So I think it's a very useful document. I'm not, I'm certainly going to vote for it. Thank you. Council, yes. you, you have to stay yes. up for the rest of the stuff. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, previous years, um, we worked collaboratively where we actually went and cut things. So, that's really what we're here for tonight, you guys. I, I was ready to see here till 11 p.m. And it looks like we're, we're kind of shorting it, but. What we've done before, and I think my colleagues remember this, we actually would go through and we would zero out items. And so this is, to, to get folks to adopt this, what do you want to do? Please share it. Because we, we can work together to make it happen. Just because I don't see anything to cut, doesn't mean we need to sit there and say, well, then no one has an appetite, I won't get six votes. That's not how it works. We have to have a dialogue. So I encourage people, say what you want to cut, let's get it done. I think you can pass it. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just always perplexed at how these debates go. So now we're arguing about whether we should have a CIP. That's mandated by charter. That isn't the debate tonight. This plan is the debate tonight. This plan calls for, example, doing millions and millions of dollars of water projects that people aren't really sure. This plan calls to build a rec center on 59 Low Street around which there is no consensus. Is the at-large council suggesting that we can resolve those issues in the next two hours? It can't be both ways. It's a planning document. It doesn't matter too much, but also you have to accept all the pieces that are in it. It's just, it, it's really unfair to try and take council's votes. This is the power that I have, this one vote. I can't speak for anybody else. I can't do anything for anybody else. This is the vote that I have. I don't want to make any cuts. 
why don't we flip the card and say, why don't you make some cuts and see if you can get more people to sign on board and vote it at a better margin if that's what's going to make you happy or accept the fact that it may have passed on a narrow margin or may not pass at all. That's actually how it works. It's, it keeps coming back to you make the cut. I'm not doing anything. I came here tonight for actually a short night and I concur very much so with the word five counselor. If you couldn't read the room on Thursday, maybe it was your first night. It was painfully obvious what was happening. I'm here partially as chair to just make it for a good process. You've had plenty of long nights. Sometimes there's a value to them and sometimes there isn't. Tonight wasn't the night. I just kind of want to respond, and maybe it's for my clarity for some of you, but I don't know how one reads the room other than what it was say. Maybe there was a lot of facial expressions that I missed. Maybe there was a lot of eye rolls that I missed. But nobody said anything substantive to indicate that this is where we'd be at tonight. So I just want to give it to yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, I just got back from vacation, uh, and so I missed uh, both last night as well as Thursday. But you know, this is news for all of you. But as we lead, that we as counselors lead into these sorts of discussions, we have offline conversations with each other. Obviously, keeping the meeting logs in um, in my mind, and but we we try to feel each other out and understand where things are going. And I just yesterday, while on vacation, had a conversation with one of the counselors that's speaking now. And it's in the vein of how can we make cuts? I want to make cuts. How can we make cuts? And at the end of the day, nothing. We didn't get anywhere where we felt that there was an opportunity. And, and I said, is there an appetite for cuts? And the answer was no, there is no appetite for cuts. So I don't understand how you can say that to me yesterday and then expect me to come here tonight and make a whole bunch of cuts. I, I in good faith, try to find a way to, to find a compromise, find a way to make cuts. We're really clear. I was pretty tough on the superintendent when schools was here, sorry. But I would have very much liked to have seen some cuts out of schools because that's where all the money went this year was to schools. But if it's not gonna happen, if it's not gonna pass, then why would I stand up here and waste everybody's time to go through cuts? Again, all 11 of us had that opportunity to make cuts tonight. Nobody made a cut. I, spoiler alerted before at the very beginning of this and said I wasn't gonna make any cuts because I didn't think any of them would pass and it was an exercise with utility. But again, I don't understand how you could say to me just yesterday a couple minutes on vacation that there was no appetite for cuts and we couldn't come to anything on cuts. And then tonight say, I'm, you know, pretty much some part of some big conspiracy, and how dare I not make cuts to me? Yeah, that's entirely unfair. Okay. Yeah, I have to speak. Um, that was me. I was asked if I was at the school. Um, did that, did that, was I holding them out? No. <laughs> so what I think is so weird is, yeah, we talk to each other, but we still bring it here into this chamber. So I was waiting for it, actually, so I could hear what the amount is. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel bad for the public. We really dip them from a conversation because for some reason there was already something going on. I don't know how many people I want to talk to. So this to me is so bizarre. I can't even respond. It's so bizarre. But to say that youth services, which I think was it's really the reason the CIP is kind of stinky. So we're get, we're somehow now have brought CIP and youth services together. So that's what I'm talking about now in terms of cuts. Let's go to the CIP. You already passed the budget. But everyone missed their opportunity. But we have now the CIP. And I already heard that the stinky cheese is in here, which is right center. And I'm telling you guys, get over it. It's in here. Go after something else. But let's get this done. I, I think the public deserves the transparency. Bring it out. Bring it on. Thank you. Um, I think counselors have spent enough time defending, I guess, what they didn't do, but they were somehow obligated to do. Um, speaking only for myself, 
I voted myself the way I wanted to in the budget. I voted my clients again, or one was represented here tonight. I spoke most of the time on why I voted the way I did, and I don't have any regrets. And I'd like to move the question on the schedule. Okay. Sir, for the job of this motion the floor was to accept the CIP. No, I should move the question on approving uh, 570. And first and second until I go for roll call. Please. Okay. This is on the new question. Council? Yes. Council Lane? Yes to the question. Yes to the question. Council McCall? Yes. Council Preston? Yes. Councilor Shane? Yes. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Z? Yes. Councilor Dunning? Yes. Yeah. Councilor Grants? Yes. Councilor Hahn for the record recused and Council Bob Kim? Yes. Question is moved. We go to a vote on uh, approving 570. Correct? So what is your... Council Wright. So, um, in my opinion, CIP has always been a wish list. There's no bill funding identified. And even if they are identified in the CIP, they're all subject to appropriation by us. So um, it really is, um, it, it's, you can take it one way or the other. You can take it as a main document. You can take it as, as a wish list. Uh, it, it has no teeth. There's nothing binding about it. So, um, so, what, what to me, what's really concerning is that it's a hundred and fifty million dollars. I think debate is closed. Okay, so we are most approved. Uh, by the so called CIP is ready. Councilor Khan, yes, Councilor Lane, Councilor McCauley, no, Councilor Preston, no, Councilor Shan, yes, Councilor Wright. No. Council Z. Council Dunning. Yes. Council Granis. Yes. Council Harmon is recused. Council Cameron. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Motion failed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody get Councilor Harmon. <laughs> Motion to approve order 579 water sewer rates. Okay. Um, just very brief, I know this is a little bit of a different night, but um, this was technically not a budget item. So the committee did discuss this on a few occasions as we talked about during the budget process. This is um, part and parcel with the uh, water enterprise fund and sewer enterprise budgets, which were just passed in the last hour or so. Um, but just for the benefit of the public so they understand, um, the changes, and I'm not going to read all of them, just the most maybe the most salient ones, but FY24 was $6.68 per 100 cubic feet for the first 3,000. FY25 is 7.50, which is about a 9% increase. And then on the sewer side, uh, for the same amount of cubic feet, 3,000 first cubic feet, and 100 cubic feet goes from 1018 to $10.50. It's a round number, 3% increase. Uh, on average, uh, and finance director provided us with a considerable amount of information uh, about the average bill going up by about 6%. Um, there's also changes to the customer service charges from $25 to $27.50. And then there are larger increases um, for so called non residential or commercial $30 to $33 uh, service charge and $125 to $137.50 per quarter. I won't even try and summarize the lengthy conversation about retained earnings and how these things kind of report with one another. Uh, but because this was moved after the budget to allow the budget to process, so the, the foundational element of that is this, and uh, that's where we're sitting today. Yeah, I, I will uh, support these. I've uh, been part the parcel of these discussions for a while. Uh, you know, I, I am cognizant that. It is an increase in rates, uh, but we do, we're in that conundrum. Uh, we increase rates, and if people don't use as much water, we increase rates more on the way. Part of the discussion, which I, I, I think uh, share is, uh, and, and to the council's point, uh, which is that we're trying to think differently along the way. And, and as part of that discussion, we challenge the Water and Sewer Commission to think differently as to how they go about uh, crafting rates along the way. Uh, if it was too late for this type of cycle, 
Uh, but you know, everyone's agreed that uh, we're trying to avoid this conundrum of higher rates and lower usage along the way and trying to uh, find a happy medium. So uh, I will support it uh, today and uh, maybe I should Yes, thank you, Council President. Um, yeah, so on the one meeting I was able to participate in, there are other communities, and I think I mentioned it during the um, opening of our budget conversations, that there is different blocks of rates based on the category of consumption. There's also a different rate for seniors. So I encourage, and I kind of started compiling a list of other communities, and I will share that as well, as well as the Water Sewer Commission folks who um, are here tonight, who I thank very much for all their work in this. So I do think that also a reminder is water, water especially, is a user control item. And part of it too is reduction of water and uses. I'm not saying do what we do, but my husband does time my teenage daughter's shower. But there are little measures because a consumption that's user-based can also be educated to be user control. So those are kind of the aspects of education, exploring different rate structures that I really hope we'll see next year. And I will help be part of that solution. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to um, say my my part of the on sort of committee report. So there are four things that are important to me. Um, number one is um, I won't I won't support a mid year further adjustment of these rates. For me, this is an annual cycle. I know during the committee this was discussed. Like, hey, we can look at this again in November or December or January, and that's been brought up in the past. I I don't I think it's too jarring. First of all, for residents, I also think if, if we can't set rates for a year at a time, it's, it's sort of it's a bit much, and also it's hard for the council to vet mid-year. So um, I will support these, but I look at them as an annual change. That's me. Um, number two is I mean I put my flag in the ground as far as uh, really getting a serious look at a second meter or a, a so hard so-called duct meter um, when uh, meters get replaced, uh, which is you know possibly looked at in the next year or two. Um, so I'd like to just put that flag in the ground again. Number three is I want to put a bit of a sharper point on the new paradigm. I think the, the thing that was most clear in the budget hearings this, this year is how much of the water and sewer departments are fixed to cost, meaning it's not the high users that are causing the cost in the system. Unfortunately, there's a ready to serve kind of cost that just exists. You have to have people, infrastructure, whether one drop of water comes through the pipe for a million, you, you have to have it there. And so I am strongly urging a look at a change in that paradigm um, that A, will align better what people pay with where the actual cost exists, and B, um, can hopefully create some more stability for the water and sewer enterprise funds going forward. Because basically, hoping for usage is no longer a good business strategy because the usage doesn't exist. And if anything, it's going down. So I guess it's unpredictable, and at worst, it's declining. Um, but again, if you want to turn that faucet on and get water, it has to be ready to serve. So that that is something that's important to me. And then the last thing is, I, I am asking for some more, you know, frankly, discipline and tightness around OPMs and project manager and consultants. That there's a considerable amount of conversation around that. I think there were a lot of balls being juggled in the air. I give TPS a lot of credit for trying to now bring that in, but I, I'm hoping that that continues to be the case, particularly around water projects. And I think as a counselor, I, I assent or agree that there's at some point we have to pick a project and go, and there's going to be risk that we pick the wrong one or we should have focused on something else, but we just can't keep all the irons in the fire that the costs are simply too high. So um, with that, I think it's important as well. Thank you, Thank you President. I um, I just want to agree with both my colleagues from budget and finance and um, two key points. One is I also have been looking at um, different models from other communities uh, for uh, the block rates, discounts, and even opportunities to kind of rethink and innovate on how we approach this, inclusive of uh, the different fee structures altogether, um, besides the beyond usage. Um, I think that is the um, responsibility of uh, our water sewer commission. I appreciate the work of this, and I appreciate the work of our finance director and DPS leadership getting us this proposal, but attached to the water sewer rates is a five-year plan. That five-year plan essentially has us stepping rates up and up and up and up and up on a two-block scale. 
Um, and so I just want to say I will support this tonight. I will not support this any, a year from now if we haven't done a lot of hard looking at different options and, and evaluated those. If that's the right thing to do and the only path forward, then we'll have that conversation in a year. But I don't think just simply coming back to this and saying, oh, we got a plan. We're going to now have enough funding in our retained earnings to be able to fund the debt to do some of these big projects. So it's the worthy aspiration. I'm glad we're thinking about it. It's, it, is, it is going to save us from having to take that funding from other sources if we can achieve it. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody, while I have them all on the room tonight, uh, can hear uh, my voice on the need to um, put pencil to paper on some different approaches that we can look at throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to make everyone aware of the concept of the law of diminishing returns. So the higher you raise the price, the lower the consumption goes. It's just, um, and then you reach a point where, 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 um, you know, where the consumption is stuck. All you can do is, is, is raise the price because the cost of everything continues to go up. So uh, that's the conundrum. That's the that's the that's what you have to deal with. The, the, the more you raise, you know, the more you raise the price, the less people consume. And the more you have to raise the price again. So it, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle and uh, does warrant uh, you know, looking at it and maybe through a different lens. But uh, it, it, it's, it's just a race to the bottom if, we, if, if you continue to uh, you know, to come up with that as your solution. Sorry, I forgot my second point, which was for uh, the chair's uh, point on. Uh, secondary uh, meter for irrigation measurement. Um, also, want to support that. We're going to be replacing the enough lights with that. Thank you. Sorry. Any further discussion? Is it going here? Thank you. Yes. Um, it was mentioned earlier about uh, some municipalities having uh, different rates for um, seniors, and I think that's something we should really discuss in the future, um, not sooner than later. I think that could go a really long way. Um, the conversation today, you know, I don't think anyone in this room would disagree that our seniors would be squeezed every which way from Sunday, and um, you know, we, we do need to find ways that we can find ways like this. Water rates, um, that would be able to choose the water. Thank you, Councilor from Board 2. I, I think it's a. I think it's not just the seniors. I think everybody is getting squeezed. Like we're getting squeezed in our personal lives. We're getting squeezed. Uh, you know, our, our own personal income isn't keeping up with inflation. Uh, those people who are fixed incomes uh, are also struggling. So uh, all these choices are very difficult things to to come up with. Um, uh, if we're going, if we're going to make a significant progress on slowing the rate of increase to all of our city services. Um, I, would, I would ask, very sincerely ask for those people who, uh, want, who, who agree with me that we need to slow down the rate of increase in our expenditures to tell, to tell us, tell, tell all of us, what services are you willing to forego? What services do you think you could live without? Because to keep everything the way that it is now, and the way that things are increasing in cost is is going to bring us right back to this place um, next year. The, the, the other thing that was mentioned in the budget process is that well, seventy five percent of every budget is is um, you know is is contractual. I, I challenge the administration, I challenge the school committee to really work hard to keep those contractual increases to where we can live with them. Because a 333 union contract, we all know, when it was steps and ladders, uh, is a 4 or 5% increase. And that's what's reflected in the budget today. So um, that's what's controllable. 75% of our budget is controllable. Uh, and, and we have to either have a reduction in, in, in bodies, well, we have to acknowledge uh, you know, on the school side, I was on a school committee for four years. We've never had a, even a conversation about increasing class sizes. It's the biggest driver of the school budget. 
Uh, those are all the things that can have a meaningful impact uh, when we examine next year's budget. For the discussion, the roll call on the roll call on motion to approve order 579 for sewer rates. Councilor Khan? Yes. Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCall? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Shannon? Yes. Council Wright? Yes. Council Z? Yes. 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 Council Dunning? Yes. Council Grants? Yes. Council Harmon? Yes. Council Kennedy? Yes. Sir, motion passed. Uh, motion to approve Order 5A1 municipal, municipal fee schedule. Second, motion to amend. Um, there are two items in here that, uh, as a result of the ordinance that passed last night, number one is I look to the chair of public works if I make a mistake, but it's ten dollars for a bulk bag, yes, and two dollars for either size bag, yes, the overthrow. So those two are in here at 15 and one and three, one and two respectively. So now they'll become 10, and any size bag is two dollars. Um, other than that, we've got the other fees as, as shown, the burial fees and cremations, etc. I tried to give a timer on that last night, so I, I won't repeat unless anybody requests that. Uh, um, you can send this out with no, no recommendation. Thank you. For the discussion on the municipal fee schedule. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, um, Standing on, I have a roll call on this. Roll call on approving uh, order 581. These guys will close in nine minutes. Councilor Khan? Yes. Councilor Lane? No. Councilor McCall? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Shan? Yes. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Z? Yes. Councilor Dunning? Yes. Councilor Grant? Yes. Councilor Hahn? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Motion passes. Go to the order. Thank you. I just want to say that um, I feel like we either very close to or over the line on questioning council's motives tonight, and I don't appreciate it. I think I was the subject of it. I don't want an apology. I don't want anything. I just want to point it out on the record. Uh, describing motive in the form of, you know, implying or even directly expressing kind of allegations of delusion and crazy things like that is not appropriate, and I don't appreciate it. Thank you. There's a Possibility of that, and I'll have two corners, and I think we all should go and check ourselves on that. Motion adjourned. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye.